It took a grueling week of long hours of trekking, freezing days and nights, and a daily deadline for two reporters who told the stories of 37 Trek for Mandela celebrities and business leaders who climbed Mount Kilimanjaro in honor of Nelson Mandela in July 2015. The two went against all odds to tell the story on radio, TV, and online of how a few group of people climbed Africa's highest peak with an aim to deliver sanitary towels to disadvantaged girls. I went in my capacity as a journalist um, to document um, every step that was taken by the climbers, to tell the personal stories, to look at um, the journey itself, how grueling it was, um, the conditions under which these climbers, um, you know, day to day, how they got to the camps, what the conditions were like, um, their personal stories, um, how they, what, what motivated them, what drove them, wanting to give up all the luxuries and the comforts of life for one week. And we wanted to tell that story, what drives a human being to give up their time, to give up their luxury um, for a cause to keep girl children in school. I was accompanied by a, a camera person. My part was to, was mostly with visuals. We went through so many challenges. A lot of planning went on before the trip, but reporting from a mountain with limited internet or power supply proved to be a challenge for the team. A lot of planning prior to leaving. We had to check up on things like roaming, a roaming 3G for my, for my laptop. If Tumelo had the correct camera, because you can't go there with a huge camera, heavy equipment, because you, it's a, it's, you, 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 you're ascending all the time. We had to look at options of a cordless mic versus a lapel mic so that things are easy. You don't want to have cables all over the place. Uh, we had a big plan of wanting to tweet, of wanting to do video um, calls, sending it through, doing diary entries, a personal diary entry of day to day. Um, but none of that materialized. Connections, we had uh, the, the bigot, we also had live view. We were expected to cross live from Tanzania to South Africa. We were expected to do live crossings. That was the whole plan. But when we got to Tanzania, nothing worked. On arrival, the crew was met with technical difficulties. They were expected to use live view to deliver videos. This requires multiple SIM cards to connect. We had organized the SIM cards before, uh, before we left South Africa. So the, the, the issue is, the issue was, uh, when we got there, they gave us the SIM cards, about 10 SIM cards. Because LiveView takes eight SIM cards, and then I, in, I, 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 I slotted them in, and then I started connecting. They, it just went blank, nothing went. I, could, I connected my camera, and then I tried to connect the LiveView so that I can call and record to see if they can see us, they can see my pictures. So, I couldn't even call because the cell phones were off. Everything was dead, like literally dead. It, 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 was, it, it, it totally stripped you of your comforts, you know, and you really had to firm up and stand up to the situation. If this doesn't work, what am I going to do? If that doesn't work, how am I going to handle the situation? But at the end of the day, you needed to deliver a story. So I had to rely on my big end. Big end is the kind of equipment we use to send visuals we connect to the satellite and then you are able it en enables you to send visuals wherever that's how i was that's how i managed to send visuals from tanzania every day when i woke up i didn't care about food and showering and and the actual physical um walk for six or seven hours every day when i woke up it was like will i make my deadline will there be enough cell phone reception Will, will I have enough battery power on my cell phone to make that call to the office? Because I dictated my script. Think of back in the days when there was no uh, laptops. People dictated their scripts. I read my intro line for line. I would say, full stop, next sentence. This is the script. And that's how I dictated my script every day, um, giving them names of people. And it was checked on the spot, because remember, once I move out of that area and once I don't have battery power, then I'm, then no one can call me, no one can get through to me. 
So it was very touch and go. There, there were places where you could receive, where there was a, a network, but you would struggle. You would literally go around with your cell phone looking for it like this. So it was a bit of, it wasn't easy. For me, I've, I've been to other trips before. This was the most technically challenging trip. I mean, every plan that we put in place of, of wanting to, you know, go, use GoPros and send things to the office, live tweeting, that all didn't materialize. Um, I think it paralyzed me day one. I was very doubtful um, of, of what I would be able to deliver. But I think once you get past day one, it almost like sets the tone for the rest of the trip. Though the team was met with challenges, which included icy weather conditions that affected both the crew and their equipment. Tanzania is an hour ahead of South Africa, so that counted in our favor. But what didn't count in our favor was at four o'clock, the temperatures drop quickly to minus, you know, degrees. And that would affect the, the camera battery, it would affect um, the satellite that we'd need to send the stories with, it would affect the laptop. So we were always at the mercy of the elements. We relied on a generator. The generator where we went, the generator went. That was like part of our being, part of our DNA. So we would, everything, we'd, we'd need special plugs, we'd need special cables, extension cords, and we'd link it up to the generator and we'd charge your phone, you charge the laptop, and that's how we were able to get power so that everything could be charged. But once the sun goes down, Things only charged up to 50%. When you wake up the next morning, it's at 1% because of the cold. Because everything freezes. So it's the most powerless position to be in when when the elements win. You know, for some time, for, for a moment, I felt like I was a soldier. And I, I was expected to deliver. I was expected to survive. Um, but um, there was a time when I was lying on the grass editing. I had my camera connected to the laptop, the laptop connected to bigger. It was freezing. There was a time where the buttons of the laptop wouldn't press. I would press and wait for it to respond. It would take forever. Your feet, I mean, it was inclined all the way. And, you know, I always said we walked and we worked. It wasn't just, you know, it was a walk in the park for us. We, we did double, of, double what the climbers did. We'd walk with him, leave them, and quickly file. And then we still had that stress of, will the package get to Johannesburg? So you'd sit there, look at the laptop while it's rendering, while it's sending the story through, and you'd pray. Every prayer that you had, you'd pray, and you'd watch, and you'd watch. And then Tomelo made a joke one day, and he came back to me and said, I've got bad news, we didn't file. But the story didn't go through to Johannesburg. And my, my soul, you know, after such a hard day, that you can't show the nation what you've done. Your soul literally drops. And then Tomelo says, no, I'm only joking. And I said, Tomelo, let's not make those kinds of jokes. I mean, it's a reality because the day before we couldn't send a story because everything froze up. So it was, it was really one of the hardest technical um, stories I've ever done, but the most fulfilling. They found creative ways to meet their deadlines while keeping up with the rest of the climbers. Once you get past day one, it almost like sets the tone for the rest of the trip. So once you get through day one, you know how to actually manage your time. What we did was we walked with a group in the morning. At lunchtime, the group would eat. We would eat very quickly. And then we'd go with a few porters and a tour guide and they'd take us the rest of the way to the, to the next camp. People were eating. I wasn't eating. I was busy ingesting footage into the laptop when people were coming from the mountain and getting ready for bed i was busy trying to send footage back at home to south africa editing and i was sleeping last i was the last one all most of the time i was the last guy going i was going to bed the last we had uh, potters helping us but and then as a camera guy you are mostly most of the time you are the one carrying your own camera and then now and then I would have it to take shots of the climbers walking I would be expected to wait for them I would rush in front of them I would walk past them and then wait for them to get into my shot 
and then walk out of a shot and then wait for them turn pen with them with the shot and then walk again and run because as everyone was working i was most of the time running i wasn't walking at the same at the, at the same pace as they were but um the potters were helping as well but basically i was carrying my own bag backpack with snacks and water lots of water because we were told to drink lots of water and then other thing is um we were i was expected to be carrying that and then my camera as well so yeah and you know as a camera guy you need steady shots i needed to have my tripod as well and we we moved ahead of of the group so that we could package the mountain inspired some creative stories and creative ways to work I knew that I needed to reinvent myself every day, that you couldn't keep telling a story of people walking. People get bored of that. So you needed to look for something interesting around the group that you were in, either tell a personal story. And then one day we found this one story of Jonathan Butt, one of the climbers. He took up crocheting. And on this whole journey, every free minute that he got, he'd be sitting there crocheting because he, last year he was part of the the, the 67 minute blanket challenge for Nelson Mandela. So he wanted to do the same thing but for this initiative and for the upcoming 67 minutes blanket challenge. And there, it was the most unusual thing, a guy taking up crocheting. And even women who didn't know how to crochet would be mesmerized and totally in awe of this guy who, when he could be putting his feet up and just closing his eyes, he's sitting there crocheting. And I found that so fascinating. If given the opportunity, the two said they'd climb Mount Kelly again with a bit more knowledge this time around. In hindsight, I should have taken a satellite phone with me. In hindsight, I shouldn't have relied so much on a SIM card because out there, technology doesn't, doesn't work out there. For the fact that it was physically challenging, mentally and technically, <laughs> I would say for me, I took it like any other story, but... Uh, it was great, it was great. And thanks to Jillian, she kept saying, no man, we have to do this. But at first she was a little bit doubtful. She was doubting me, so. <laughs> but I, I can tell you, I gave her five. You must never doubt me and you go out there. So it was great for me. We, we, we made a great team together, so. It was great. Um, I'd like to go with the same person that I've worked with because you, it's nice now because we know now what to expect we know how to to do things so yes I do it again I do it again if it means keeping one girl in school I'd climb that mountain again